What's up, you guys? It is your boy JB, and we are here tonight with a review for Married to Medicine Season 8, Episode 13. The episode was titled Chanel Charade, you guys. All right, you guys. So I had to go the old fashioned way and write my notes out for you guys tonight. Can you guys see that? I don't think you guys can see my notes. Yeah, I had to handwrite these bad boogers tonight. Had to handwrite them. See? Hand write because my phone, you know, I forgot to charge it. Actually, I forget to charge it. My car today, she chose violence and left us stranded on the side of the road for a little bit. And yeah, but yeah, you guys, that's uh, that's yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, yeah, before we get into this review, you guys, do me a solid favor if you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else so that way you guys can stop taking me out on dates and not paying for the food. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into this review, shall we? All right, you guys, so let's start up with the men. So we have Dr. Scott, we have Dr. Uh, Eugene, and Cecil. So they're all meeting up at Cecil's bar and they are discussing, you know, the couples in that they had and how it actually went really well and then are also talking about the fact that Tony and Contessa really getting along with each other which is a shock to them so once so at first it was just Scott it was just Eugene and Cecil there so then Scott talk comes in and Scott I got an issue with you buddy okay so you know Cecil asked how things are going with him and um, Contessa's you know practice they're up and running he was um, interviewing for an esthetician. My little cousin's an esthetician. You know, that's something that I want to get into. Let me know in the conversation what you guys would think about that. So I'm thinking about, you know, because so, I can see dark spots in my face sometimes when I'm on camera. I'm thinking about putting on a little bit of makeup, you know, when I do my videos. Let me know if you guys would like, let me know how you guys think, what you guys think about that. Let me know what you guys think about men that wear makeup. But yeah. He's, hiring, he's trying to hire an esthetician. Now, he said the esthetician is a, I guess she's a good looking young lady and he doesn't feel that Contessa will go for that. The thing that bothered me with Scott was the fact that he had the girl's picture in his phone. Why you got a picture in your phone, Scott? Why? Why? Contessa and Scott, I don't wanna start to feel like they are doing like what other couples on reality TV are doing i.e. Rashida and Kirk, i.e. Ray and Pranky. I don't want to feel like they selling their marriage out for these shows. I really don't want to feel like that. And then they talk about him going to um, counseling. Scott, just go for the sake of your marriage. If you want to keep your marriage, I think you should go. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys, next let's talk about Anila. So Anila takes Mrs. Gomez to the new house. I was looking at the new house. This ain't to be shady in no way, shape, form, or fashion, but the new house don't look any different than the last time we saw the new house. It still looks the same. I know y'all are behind, but are y'all behind on, you know, on the budget as well? Not being shady, just asking a question. Because like I said, that house looks the same. So like I said, she's showing Ms. Gomez around. She's showing Ms. Gomez the kitchen. Hmm, maybe I should let Ms. Gomez go. No shade to Ms. Gomez. I'm not trying to take no money out of Ms. Gomez's pockets. But maybe I should let Ms. Gomez go because, like I said, this house looks the same as the last time. So, Anila and Ms. Gomez are talking about. I don't know how the conversation come up, but they were talking about, you know, her. Actually, she was talking about her kids. You know, I don't know how the conversation. I, I really don't remember how the conversation came up. But they definitely discussed, you know, their background, so they're both, you know, they're not white, blonde hair, blue eyed people. So, you know, they had different treatments. Well, Ms. Gomez says she didn't have any kind of different treatment. And as far as her kids go, she doesn't know because, she, you know, her kids never said anything to her about it. But she does let Anila know that her daughter, Ariana, told her that she would like to have blonde hair and blue eyes. And I was like, oh no, she's a baby. And she wishes that she had blonde hair and blue eyes. 
I am glad that Anila, later in the episode, we saw Anila, so she sat down with Ariana, and I'm glad that Anila did have this conversation with her because, mm, I mean, it's, I guess it could be the same thing like in the African American community, how we have the light skin versus the dark skin thing. Because as as a kid, hmm, did I ever have any issues with my skin growing up as a kid? I didn't. I didn't have it. Actually, let me stop lying. I did have an issue with my skin as a kid. You guys know I live in Texas and I grew up in the country. So in the summer, I get this color. I get darker. Like I get darker during the summer. But then in the winter, I lighten up. Like if you guys look at my wrist, it's very it's very light like if you guys look right there there's my tan line like you can see where I tan at like during the summer I get super because I used to play I mean as a kid we play outside and in Texas play outside my grandma always told us go outside and play so I played outside and I would get the darkest oh there we go that back need to crack I would get the darkest so sometimes I would look at my cousins who we're a little bit lighter skinned than me, and I'm like, I wish I was your skin color. But, you know, my mom always told me there's nothing wrong. She always told me nothing was wrong with my skin color. And, I, you know, nothing's wrong with it at all. Like I say, I just go between. Like, I have pictures of me where I am brown skin, like really, really brown, the color of my wrist. Like, the color of my I have pictures where I'm this color. But then I have pictures of me at this color. And I love both. I love both shades of me. And then Anila asked her daughter, why does she want to be, you know, why does she want blonde hair and blonde? She said, because everyone has white skin. And I was like, oh, no. I wonder what the kids are saying. You know, kids in this day and age, they can be, I mean, they can, they're a little worse than what I remember. I mean, we would do your, your mama jokes. We would do all kinds. We would joke with each other. But, like, kids in this day and age, like, if you have a bully... Kids today can't really escape their bullies because they can, you know, go home and the bullies on social media. Mm, that's one of the things about social media that I kind of hate. But let's move on. All right, guys, let's talk about Dr. Jackie real quick. So Dr. Jackie, she and Simone, actually Simone pulled up on her and they are going to have lunch. And it's been quite some time since Simone and Jackie had lunch. And honestly, you guys, I, I have missed seeing Simone and Jackie have lunch. It wasn't the same when Heavenly tried to have lunch with Jackie. So um, Simone is talking to Jackie about this initiative that she wants to do. So with them going to D.C. and, you know, participating in the march, it's made Simone want to be more active. And she wants to do something, you know, to rally people around getting out there and voting in the 2020 election. So she wants to do a get out and vote town hall. Now, Simone let us know that she mentioned this to Lisa Nicole. But when she mentioned it to Lisa Nicole, she mentioned it to her because she wanted it to be a collaborative with all the ladies. She didn't want it to just be her putting it together. She wanted collaborations from every lady. So that means she wanted collaborations from Lisa Nicole, I guess Carrie, Quad, um, Jackie, Heavenly, Contessa, Anila, and even Toya. So she wanted collaborations from all the ladies. But Lisa Nicole took it one step further and made it all made the town hall all about her. So she reached out to people to be a part of a, the panel, which Simone was like, uh, huh? Like this was supposed to be a group thing. How do you go behind everyone's back and make it all about numero uno? Which that is fucked up. Like I would hate I've actually been in situations like that. I've been in group projects <clears throat> where one person wants to take the initiative and just dict, you know, try to dictate to everyone else what they do. It's like no, 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 no. This is a group event. This is a group project. And then, especially when someone's worse in school, and it's great. It's like eh, eh, eh. it don't work like that. You don't tell us what we're gonna do. You get input from everyone so I got exactly where Simone's coming from because that, that's like I said that had ha that has happened to me before in college where one person tried to dictate to everybody in my group what we were doing and we all said no we don't want to do that that's not what we want to do 
and then well what do you guys want to do well we all have we all have ideas and let's which we always want with, we in that group we want with my idea because my idea was better you piece of hair but yeah i definitely get where someone's coming from but let's move all on. right you guys let's talk about heavenly real quick one really much with Heavenly, so I, so Heavenly and Zachary bought that house that they went and looked at in that one episode, which it's a nice looking house. So what they're gonna do, and I really, I you know, my hat is off to Heavenly. My hat is off to Heavenly. I, I, I can't, you know, as much as I give Heavenly grief sometimes, and as much as I do, you know, call her out on her shit, I gotta uplift her and say when she's doing something right. And with this one, Heavenly is doing something right. She is teaching her kids about generational wealth, and I can't knock her for that. So what she and Zachary are going to do with this house is they are going to, you know, get it back in a good looking shape, and they're going to rent it out as an Airbnb. I'm like, oh, that's some money right there. That is some money. And then, you know, so Zachary has taken it upon himself to decorate the house. I'm in agreement with Heavenly. That decor was not the best. I mean, I know he tr he's trying, but mm -mm. especially that bedroom. I'm like, that bedroom is bare. Those sheets are hideous. And it's bare. But again, we're going to give him an A. For, we're just going to let, we're going to give him an A for trying. So then, you know, she goes outside and they talk to each other and... Once again, like I said, she was talking to him about generational wealth. And, you know, she was telling him that, you know, he knows her much better than what other people know, which that's true. He knows you better than, you know, anybody else. And he knows that you joke and stuff. I mean, I don't, I don't have a problem with heavenly joking, but sometimes the things that she says can go a little bit too far. So then she asked him, what kind of woman does he want? Um, heavenly, let's see. What does it say on my paper? How can I say this the nicest way without being shady? How can I say this without being shady? Oh, here it is. Child, he want a man. No shade. Y'all, I, I, it was right here. I, I, knew what it, I knew what it said the whole time. I was just trying to think about how not, I was just giving y'all a long pause. But not for real, for real. I don't think Zachary's straight. Not being funny, just going off of the vibe that I see from him on television. I could be wrong. I could be. I could be. But let's move on. All right, Contessa. Ooh, Contessa. Contessa, 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 Contessa. Mm. So Contessa's meeting with, a, with her life coach. And mind you, it's just her, no Scott. That's a bad sign right there. Again, like I said, I really hope and pray that when it comes to Scott and Contessa, that they are not pulling the wool over us. You know, I just really hope that's not what they're doing. I want, I don't want to believe that they're in a bad space in their marriage. But at the same time, I don't want to feel that they are exacerbating maybe a small, minute, problem in their marriage is a marriage perfect no is you know is a marriage gonna have its you know its hiccups absolutely but every season ah forgive me if i'm wrong but i just i just i i don't know when it comes to scott and contest i really truly do not know so for me i just feel that when it comes to contessa and especially listen to her talk about her mom and her her father and her being the middle child and that her and her siblings were there for her mom when she was sick with breast cancer. A part of me just feels that maybe Contessa is chasing something that she missed in her upbringing. I don't know. It just really feels that Contessa is chasing something. And, you know, she talks about the fact that Scott doesn't, you know, she feels that Scott doesn't listen to her, which I'll give her that. But like I said, I just still feel like she's missing. It's something that she's chasing after. It's something that she doesn't, I don't know what it is. I don't know. 
if you guys have a, any, you know, if you guys have any, you know, inclination, or if you think you know what she might be, what it might be, I don't know. Leave in the comment section what you guys think about this with Scott and the Contessa. Now, I know she said she doesn't feel like her heart is safe with him or something like that. Okay, let's move on. All right, you guys, let's wrap this episode up with this damn town hall that Lisa Nicole was hosting. Was this really a town hall? Because that didn't look like a town hall. Because I was confused. Because when Simone was talking about it, she was talking about there was a panel. There was a panel. And I'm like, at her house? I mean, I get that we're in a pandemic, but is this a town hall? Is this, is just, is this just dinner? Because I was hella confused. I'm like, I get it, COVID. You're not going to have a lot of people around. So I'm like, okay, maybe she could do a town hall at her home and it could be virtual. But I'm still confused by that. So Simone, when she did show up, they were like, you know, Simone, something's up. Are you like sad about something? She's like, sad or more so irritated. So they're like, well, why would you be irritated? And she tells Lisa. So then she showed, they show us this letter that Lisa Nicole sent out. And I will say, Simone said the letter didn't say anything about them. Um, Simone, it actually kind of did, but then it kind of contradicted at the end of it. So in it, she did say that the cast of Bravo's Married to Medicine will be putting this on. It will be showcased on Bravo and virtually, but at the end of it, she did sign at least Nicole and the other people that were that she involved. So, yeah, Luff effed up. So then Heavenly shows up. Now, Lisa Nicole, I know you were trying to be shady and funny, but really that measuring tape, you, you pretend like you hugging Heavenly and then going to try to measure her waist, that was shady. And then the fact that you bought her a, a Chanel, you got a, a Chanel bag that's a gift, which was actually the Chanel charade. It was a scale in there. So I guess after, so Lisa um, got a text message from Heavenly when she was on that pony. And I guess it said something about 150. So now she wants to know if Heavenly actually weighs 150. I'm like, that's shady. And Heavenly was ready to go. And I'm like, actually, Heavenly, here's another time that I'm on your side. I was with Heavenly. It was fun shade, but girl, don't come in. Like, if this, if we're supposed to be talking about putting on a town hall, keep the fun, keep the funny shady gift for another time. This isn't the time or the place for that. Child, how am I agreeing with heavenly of all people? So then Toya chimes in once heavenly leaves to come at Jackie. I was like, okay. Now, I get where Toya, I got where Toya was coming from. I really did. I 100% I, I got where Toya was coming from. But Toya's approach is terrible. Her approach was terrible. Now, I will say in this episode, I don't think that Toya was drunk. But I just, her, her approach was just terrible when it came to Jack and Jack. It was like, girl, you might want to calm it all the way down. So then they went to the bathroom and they talked. And like I said, I get where, heavily, I get where Toya's coming from. I do. She's talking, she's tired. She introduced, she was introduced to Heavenly. She's known Heavenly a lot longer than a girl. She's known her for 12 years. And she just feels a type of way about Heavenly. She introduced her to the group. And then now Heavenly call, you know, talks about how stupid she is, talks about Eugene. I get where Toya's coming from. Like I said, once again, it was just Toya's terrible approach to me. But that's actually the end of the episode, you guys. Be sure to like this video. Leave your comments in the comment section below. And subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And share this video. And until the next one, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask or not. Whichever one you do, stay safe, stay blessed. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.